so we can retrieve names and stuff for items but let's make them look the way they are supposed to look when they are here so we know that this information contains everything we need the database let's go down here to our db post db and products so in products here we have the image we have the description we have the barcode okay so we also have uh, this view here that we get before we reload the data so in json products right i don't need any of these cards so end card end card i will delete the rest i just need this one single card and i can cut that one so that this part is empty to begin with and then i will go down to my uh, javascript and i'll create a simple function down here it's always better to add a function for every function that you want to do. So uh, here, I don't know, I'll say generate, uh, what do I, oh, I'll just call it product underscore uh, HTML, something like this. Then let's put some data there and paste. Okay, so this is the product HTML. So what I want to do is just tell it to return this. So I'm just going to say return, and then uh, I will say, I'll put uh, these uh, back ticks here. The reason I like back ticks is because you can do multi-line. If I use double quotes like this, it creates an error when I go to the next line, but back ticks don't do that. So this is under your escape key or above the tab key. There's a back tick there. So let me move this here and move this back. I don't need the card end card, but eh, can leave it there. So all I'll do is return this, right? So product HTML, that's it. So if instead of us telling uh, the thing to, to show this, all I'm going to do is put that product html and then semicolon but then the data is the whole row which i'll put in here not just for the description and remove that okay so product html return this so once i do this we are back to square one if i refresh that's what i get uh very cool we are getting somewhere why is this to uh Let's see, max width, instead of 200, let me try 190, just so more can fit here, eh, something like that. Okay, so at least I, have, I know there are four items, but it's the same code, that's why it's repeated like this. Let's change the names, just the names themselves. So data is an object. So the advantage of backticks is we can include variables in here. So for example, on the name here, what I can do is put a dollar sign like this. The moment I say dollar sign and selected area, it does this for me. Then I can do data dot description. Okay, so whenever you do dollar sign brackets like this inside backticks, then this is a variable that will be replacing the data there. So if I refresh, you see, that's what I get. Very good. And then uh, we can also do price or image as well, because keep in mind, we do have an image in here and it's in there. So what I would do is just say, uh, instead of image like this, let me copy that and put it here. This changes to image. Now, since this is already, are these square images already? Okay, so they're not square images for now. Uh, so that might be a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how to fix that. But this is what we have so far. Let's put prices as well. So I'm just going to put a price here. Wait, is it price or amount? It is a uh, amount. Yes. Amount. This is all the information we need, really. 
And there we go. So things are looking good. Yes, looking good. The only problem is we don't have square images, right? But we can easily fix that. Because remember, we have a function that crops our images. So what I can do is, the problem we have really is that, let's say JavaScript, uh, this is JavaScript, right? But that function for cropping is a PHP function. So what we need to do is attack this problem while it's still in its infancy here in PHP side. So what we'll do is let's look through. And so I'm going to say if rows, right? Mm -hmm. Like so. Yes. If rows was a thing, and then instead before we echo the rows, let's look through them. So I'm just saying, going to say for each rows as key and value. Then what I'll do is I just want to target the images themselves. So I'm just going to say this is a row, by the way, a single row. And I need the key because I want to manipulate the original rows. So what I'll do is I'm just going to say rows, the current key, and wait, are we using objects or what? I keep forgetting because I do so many projects um, every single day. So I have to remind myself in database.php, are we getting, okay, we are getting arrays, all right. So the key image. So I want to change what's in here. I'm going to say is equal to crop. So we use the function crop, and then we get exactly this. Actually, we don't need all that. We just need this rose image like that. And that's it. So it will change those to a cropped version. And when I refresh, there we go. Look at that. Very nice, eh? Hmm. So right here, I can also change other things. Uh, for example, I want to capitalize the names, the descriptions. So I'll just say description. Now, instead of getting the cropped version, I'm going to get the uh, string to upper. So I'm changing that to uppercase. Yes. So when I come back here, there we go. Look at that. Okay, so finally, we have some items that are reading from the actual database. So if I add a new item, I will see it right here, which is cool. Yes, yes. And to finish off, to finish off here, I need to make sure that the latest item is at the beginning. So let's go back here. We also have views here. So I want us to use the views in order to order our items. Right now, the so good milk is at the end, right? It's at the end, and um, that's not good. We want the first items this way, but most importantly, we want the views uh, to order uh, as an order. But for now, let's try and use the ID. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try and use the ID. So what I'll do is, because I don't want to have to start using queries here at all. So I want to customize the uh, database thing a little bit more. So I'll go to model.php. So there's get all here, which is exactly what I'll do here as well. Now there's an order down here. So I can put more items here. So I'm just going to say order. I'll put a, uh, we'll be ordering by descending. Now, if we want, we can change the order uh, column. What column we want to order by. This way we make this thing uh, more robust. For now, it's the ID. Okay, great. So if I want to change this, I would have to supply values for all of these up to the end. Okay, so that makes it a future proof, so to speak. So at the end here of our query, same as here, I will say, uh, actually before this limit, limit and offset should be the last items. 
So just before them, I'll put a space and say order by, and then we'll say order column, and then what we are ordering by, which is the order. Okay, so it's like, let's say if the column is ID, we'll say order by ID descending. Okay, very good. So like this, nothing will change. Um, if I refresh my data, it will still come back. But you see we are ordering by the ID now. So the so good, which was created last, is now first. But we will start ordering by views later on. So we'll change that eventually. But at least you get the idea that we can order by the latest item here. So if I add a new item, it will appear here can do that by going to the admin products and adding a new item. Let me browse for uh, images here. I'm not even sure if I have good product images here. Uh, let's try Omo. Omo. Uh, softener. Why am I using capital letters anyway? Okay, so 100. Um, let's try $50 and let's save. So we have Omo there. And if I go to my homepage, you see Omo right there. Mm -hmm. Very cool.